How's it folks? Patch 1 for Baldur's Gate 3 has just released and it addresses over 1000 bugs, balancing flow issues and much, much more. They have eliminated issues like NPCs who sometimes spot you when they really shouldn't be able to, floating items like mugs and newspapers that should abide the laws of gravity, and the conclusion to Shadowheart's romance scene not triggering for some players among others. Patch 1 also tackles a few visual bugs and sprinkles on more post-launch polish. They are also bringing back the short kent summer with better kissing contact for short races. They also mention that there won't be a long wait for patch 2 which is right around the corner. That update will feature significant performance improvements but they will also go into more detail about that closer to its release. Which by the sounds of it they trying to get that release before the PlayStation 5 version comes out. Something to keep in mind is that there will be some spoilers within these patch notes so I'll link it down below if you want to read through it by yourself but otherwise I'm gonna go through it. Starting off with the highlights, the Emperor will no longer leave you stranded in the Morphic Pool. Starting to use the boat to go to the Morphic Pool, sending that character to camp and then using another character to make the journey will no longer block you from progressing. Fixed a bug where listening in on a conversation as player 1 and then exiting the dialogue prematurely could result in not being able to interact with anything anymore. Fixed an issue causing the reaction UR to not work correctly and potentially block progress in combat if you save the game in the middle of a reaction. Fixed loot in corpses sometimes not appearing in multiplayer and toll an item is dragged onto the corpse. Fixed a bug causing you to get a game over screen after helping downed party members. Fixed the home of arcane acuity crashing the game. The condition is now capped to 7 stacks. Attacking an NPC during a dialogue after being downed will now get you arrested rather than giving you a game over screen. Fixed an issue where characters could get stuck in an infinite falling loop. Fixed an issue with Marcus being resurrected by players hitting him with a dual wield attack. The second hit will no longer revive him. And then for the story flow and logic, Will should be able to talk about Raven Guard being at Moonrise Towers and will no longer have an exclamation point above his head without having anything new to say. Will should now be able to tell you what to do next if Answer is killed and he has an exclamation mark above his head. Raven Guard no longer addresses non tadpole characters as true souls in Worms Rock. Shadowheart should more easily follow up on her proposed romance moments in Act 3. Fixed conditions being updated before a save game finished loading. This for instance caused the hag to have 0 HP if loading an autosave created when entering the lower city, preventing you from progressing through related quests. Fixed Karlak not going to camp after being freed from the Worms Rock prison if your party was full. Jahira and Minsk's path are tarred after you save Minsk, so if you have forsaken him, Jahira should now follow after him. Fixed bug that made it possible to break up with Asterion without meaning to. The Drider will now recognize that you with him when reaching Moonrise Towers if you start following him in the middle of his route. Art Kulag and Fist Jahala no longer get so scared of bears and spiders that their quest breaks. The Zentarum will more consistently use the mines after their allies have fallen back to safety and will no longer actively try to blow themselves up by checking active mines. Minthara no longer references irrelevant topics or passes judgement on companions more than once, fix the dialogue flow when dating Minthara, fixed Minthara's body disappearing at camp after you decide to bring a sweet moment to a terrible end. You can no longer recruit both Holson and Mathara to camp in the same playthrough. Changed several precise map markers into more appropriate general area markers such as for investigating Kaga and investigating the cellar in the Blouted Village and finding Holson at the Goblin Camp. Made it less ambiguous that you are starting a romance with Gale when choosing certain dialogue options. During Gale's spell teaching scene, you now have the option to picture a future with Gale that falls somewhere in between kissing him and kicking him in the head. When confronting Raphael in the House of Hope, 
Raphael will no longer target his own pillars or allies with Flames of Avernus. The Rescue the Grand Duke quest should now receive a proper update about the Duke's whereabouts regardless of the way the quest started. Fixed an issue where using non-lethal attacks on Auntie Ethel would still kill her. You can now opt to respect the privacy of the bugbear and the ogre outside the blighted village again. Don't get in the way of real love. Fixed a level design quirk that would allow you to use a spell like Misty Step or Dimension Door to skip part of the main quest sequence in Act 2. Fixed an issue where the boulder's mouth headline about a cute cat could get accidentally overwritten. If Will isn't recruited, he will now recognize Avatar Karlak and initiate dialogue. Made sure Mazora can always interrupt Will no matter where he runs off to. Throwing a single coin at the beggars will no longer damage them. If Dolly 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 curses you with a clown in town condition for making her angry while inside the moon lantern, she will now paint your face. That will teach you. The Zentarum at the Goblin Camp should now be more tolerant if you approach them. Moving on to balance, made gold bounties more generous in several containers across the game. Increased player's HP bonus in Explorer mode from 50% to 100%. Fixed the free cast tadpole power to properly reset on long rest. It was creating infinite spell slots and sorcery points for sorcerers. Arcane Trickster's Mage Hand Legendman now does not expire until destroyed and does not lose invisibility on long rest. You can no longer have multiple mage hands active at the same time. The shield reaction can no longer be used while silenced. Fix not being able to create 5th level spell slots from sorcery points. College of Law bards can now pick which additional skill proficiency they receive. Bards that are already of the College of Law need to respec to get this choice. Made sure proper spell DC is applied during multi-classing. Added spells to Bard's Moagical Secrets feature. Banish and Smart, Animate Dead, Crusader's Mantle, Hunger of Hadar, Revivify, Sleet Storm, Rage of Enfeeblement, Web, Entangle, Hunter's Mark, Sanctuary, Thunderous Smart, Bone Chill, Eldritch Morphic Blast, Firebolt, Ray of Frost, and Sacred Flame. The Club of Hill Giant Strength now increases strength to 19 and not some puny 15. Fixed a bug with ranged enemies applying Hunter's Mark constantly even when not needed. Warlocks, Pact of the Chain summons now get to use their extra attack more than once. Fixed NPCs sometimes spotting you even if they're not supposed to be able to. Fixed an issue where multiple rolls trigger if you walk along the edge of a cone of vision. Dance Macabre, Ghouls will no longer kill you when you long rest. If you make a successful saving throw against a poison, you will now gain immunity to that specific poison for two turns. Grim, the protector of the forge, now deals more damage in tactician mode. Mean locks are now immune to the shadow curse. Increase HP and AC of Orin. Lorokin can no longer cast his signature reaction spell, Elemental Retort, when silenced. Hopped Manthara remember how to use her weapons. Fixed enemies targeting you from above through the ceiling in the Gauntlet of Shah. Enable trespass warnings for any additional characters that trespass after the first instead of immediately triggering combat. Fixed NPCs taken outside of their turn when combat starts during turn based mode. Moving on to usability. Fixed dialogue notifications like approval ratings and role results disappearing too early. The launcher will now remember whether you chose DX11 or Vulcan. Fixed the incorrect amount of gold being displayed in all UR menus if the amount is too large. Fixed spells like hex randomly shifting in order causing you to misclick if you're moving and clicking around intuitively. Fixed players who are merely listening in on a dialogue being able to skip lines. Only the speaker can now do this. Fixed an issue with camp supplier values for the second local player in multiplayer if they joined during a game. Long rests will, alas, no longer cost nothing. You can no longer interact with another player's inventory if their inventory is locked. Fixed the critical hit text, sometimes not appearing. Improved the performance of the minimap when new map markers appear or old ones disappear. Dyed armor will now appear in the right color in the level up screen. Holson's wild shaped tooltip will now correctly call him a cave bear. 
Moving on to visuals, fixed the modesty filter not working on Dragonborns. Fixed earrings on tiefling female strong character models. Added a controller style option which allows you to override which controller icons are displayed. Fixed an issue causing the clown makeup to not only appear on Lazel's face when applied, but also remove her characteristic tattoos and makeup. Invoke Duplicity now works as an identical copy of your character and they're not naked. Fixed a leather helmet, a metal helmet and the helmet of smithing floating on some character models. Undergoing partial ceramorphosis will now rot your teeth. Lazel's underwear will now more accurately reflect the colour of dyes used on it. Going into cinematic scenes. Made fixes to kissing scenes with origin characters across the game. For example, to make sure physical contact is made properly to account for short races and to account for uneven ground. Made sure Dame Aelin's armor and winds are correct in the scene when she kicks Laura Aiken's butt. Fixed items like mugs and newspapers floating in the air during dialogues, the characters holding them were correctly hidden, but the items themselves weren't. Ghosties, be gone. Fixed Scratcher's position so you can try to get that ball out of his mouth. Whether he'll let you have it is another matter. Improved Volo's aim during your ass pick lobotomy. Lazo no longer floats up and down during your dialogue where you discuss dating. Made sure Will has room to dance no matter where you camp in. Fixed some cameras that couldn't contain the force that is Asterian in a dialogue with him at night at camp. Also tweaked and added facial expressions where needed. The red dragon you see through the telescope in the Emerald Grove will no longer remain blurry after you pass the perception check. Fixed a camera position when Carlike hugs you for the first time after giving her upgrade. Fixed the Mind Flayer not appearing in the cinematic dialogue with Draw Ragzalan if you manually trigger the dialogue. Going into loot and trade. Traders who stock dars now also stock dar remover. Made Lady Esther available to trade with after you've completed her quests. Fish vendors now have more fish to sell. That new bait must be doing the trick. Popper the Kobold at the circus now sells more oddities. Lady Janeth will now have artsy items to trade. Skeletons around the Cellunite outpost no longer have fresh food in their inventory. Losa's portrait is now reachable, chief. Miscellaneous. Updated the credits and reformatted them into two neater columns. The digital deluxe DLC's Divinity Original Sin 2 Bard Sons are now also granted to companions as well, instead of just player avatars. All the extra Bard Sons from the deluxe edition will now be available even if you use Loisa's Flute of the Merryweather Bard from the deluxe edition. DLC rewards will no longer get removed if you load a save with that DLC not stored. Any rewards that were removed due to this will be restored. Steel Watcher idle sounds no longer take up streaming bandwidth. You can no longer climb the shambling mound. Optimized the walking bounds of glut so that it navigates the world and the battlefield better. Crashes and blockers. Fix a crash on loading screens that had party followers with what we call local items. Fix a random crash when going to long rest in the camp on split screen. Fix a crash in Vulcan API. Fix textures trying to load in twice when they request it again while still pending unload, which could cause a crash later on. Fix a crash that could occur when destroying projectiles. Fix a crash that could occur when the sunlit wetlands illusion dropped. Fix an issue with cross save that prevent players with unstable internet connections from creating or loading a save game. Fix clients getting stuck on the loading screen when attempting to join a host with mods running. Fixed a crash related to interacting with a transponder on the Nautilid and then opening the character sheet or party view. Going into multiplayer, fixed the game thinking you have two controllers and entering split screen if you connect one controller via Bluetooth and then also plug it in physically. Fixed save and load warning messages appearing for non-host players and overlapping on the controller game menu in split screen. Fixed multiple issues when in a multiplayer game, a client leaves a game during a role in a dialogue. Moving on to combat and balance. Fix not being able to enter and in combat when a character kills an enemy while outside of combat. Multiclassing into ranger now correctly provides proficiency in multiplayer weapons. Increase the HP of swarms in the guild hill to bring their turtles more in line with their level expectations. 
fix the toll collector's visages, not attacking you if she can't initiate combat herself. Adventurer Razon in the flop house is now level 5 instead of level 1. The voiceless penitent in the lower city is now a level 10 paladin, a worthy opponent. Githyanki will now move position when Kresh Yelik turns hostile. Harper Donna now has the ability scores and proficiencies of a proper wizard. Made sure certain bushes in the wilderness and the swamp in Act 1 don't block projectiles during combat. Fixed the Slayer form, not receiving an AC bonus from killing marked targets. The ambushers in the Temple of Baal were ambushing and hiding too well. They now correctly wait in ambush or leave, depending on whether their leader is alive or dead. The rats in the Gauntlet of Shah should no longer scurry to low depths after you've engaged them in combat. Fixed the hag using an incorrect spell during one of her phases and tweaked the damage values for that spell that she should have been using. Made the assault at Moonrise Towers a little less unforgiving if Jahira is alone or dead and you don't have the Harpers to help you. Fixed the Flaming Sphere having an attack of opportunity. Fixed an infinite damage loop between the Oakfather's Embrace and Justicia Avengers in Tactician Mode. Fixed Arch Frey Warlocks not being able to use their Warlock spell slots if they are a lower level than regular spell slots when multiclassing. Fix the sneak attack reaction not working if a melee finesse weapon is not equipped. The durable feat now has the intended maximum constitution of 20. Fixed some smoke powder arrows having an incorrect weight and price. NPCs are now less likely to attack spiritual weapons. Fix spiritual weapon and spirit guardian receiving a 2 hit bonus in tactician mode. Spiritual weapon upcast to 6th level will now have the correct 36 HP when spawned. Second wind and lay on hands healing amounts now correctly scale with class level rather than overall character level. Fixed characters trying to move into combat position if they cast in a spell, so they no longer move back and forth from their combat position and spell casting. Mimics will now react to being attacked from afar. Using the call fourth ally summons no longer causes allies to enter combat hostile towards you. Allies now always join combat no matter the distance they are from enemies when summoned. Whirlwind no longer requires concentration and has been reduced to 3 rounds. The Owlbear Wild Shape will no longer lose access to its rage charges at level 8. Spiders in the Goblin Camp should no longer stack on top of each other when they are trying to bite their victim. And Thara is no longer immortal for the entirety of the attack on the Emerald Grove. Fixed Goblins rolling initiative while in combat and skipping their turn at the Goblin Camp checkpoint. Halfling cultists in Kresh Yelik now wear leather armor. Fix the combat AR timing out and ending the turn due to the game trying to create a puddle when it wasn't possible. Reduced the flesh golem's attack damage in explorer mode. Tweaked the relationship between goblins and spiders. Goblins will react if you attack the spiders but the spiders don't care much for the goblins and won't join their combats. Fixed onto Ethel dying instead of getting knocked out even when non-lethal attacks are toggled on. In tactician mode, mean locks now have increased dexterity and constitution stats, as was intended. In tactician mode, dinosaurs now have an extra attack. In tactician mode, Houndmaster Pole's dogs now have a terrifying howl action. Grimishka's panther polymorph now has jump. Going on to actions and conditions. Dragonborn's breath weapon attack now scales with your character level and uses constitution as its saving throw. Made sure Kithraki Inferno can only be used once as intended. Sapped characters now always fail dexterity and strength saving throws. Fixed pommel strike being able to knock out characters that are immune to being knocked out. The wind horror claw attack no longer paralyzes undead. The magic weapon spell upcasted to 4th level or higher now grants the correct bonus value. Corrected the DC of Death's Head Stunning Gaze and fixed the distance in the Deception, which said 9 meter instead of 18 meters. Fixed the feared condition causing a saving throw even when the affected character is in the direct line of sight of the source of the fear. Added a workaround for cases where casting the silence spell caused the game to freeze for long periods. Fixed certain save games where you cannot talk to any or certain NPCs 
after the silence or garrote spells were used. Multi-attack spells such as flurry of blows should now only trigger the netherbrain psionic rebuke reaction when the final attack is landed instead of after the first attack. Fix minor illusion and invoke duplicity causing an infinite loop of starting and ending combat. Symbiotic entity now works with unarmed attacks. Wild Magic Surge Retribution now also works for ranged attacks. The Crusader's mantle action now shows the aura radius during its preview. The Telekinesis spell now works correctly when you attempt to use it from the hotbar. Fix the Sword of Life Stealing's effect, not triggering when dealing a critical hit. Insect Plague now correctly rolls a Constitution saving throw each turn to deal full or half damage. Characters will also make a saving throw if they walk into the Insect Plague for the first time each turn. Fixed Shield of Thralls being able to stun allies. Key Resonation Blast targeting now shows the correct 5 meter AOE around the target. Fixed Stinking Cloud not reapplying its condition to characters that had the condition on the previous turn. Fixed Silence blocking casting Ice Knife. Mystic Carrion's Canopic Jar condition is no longer removed on his death. Fix the Exposing Bart condition being removed on any attack instead of only melee attacks. Fix the Cloud of Dagger spell sometimes not being considered a hostile action and not starting combat. Fix the Stone Skin spell granting resistance to magical damage, which should now only provide resistance to non-magical damage. Fix the Prepare and Brace weapon actions requiring 75% movement to be available. Also fix the associated misleading can't be immobilized warning when that happens. Moving on to gameplay. You can now gain XP for enemies destroyed at the end of the lakeside ritual by last light. Entering the city sewers from a certain location now gives the same exploration XP as other routes. Added XP rewards for the area around the mason's house in the shadow cursed lands because you deserve it. When defending Helsen's portal, individual enemies now give less XP. Fix their bug, allowing you to use the Nox spell to unlock magically protected doors in Cazador's dungeon. Fix the oil of combustion exploding after its condition expires. Fix the wall of fire area of effect not matching the target indicator. A scroll of summon quasit should now drop even if the container that hold it was destroyed. The planar ally Cambion fire surface no longer creates a fire surface on death. Made adjustments to balance dance macabre and fixed the school of necromancy version to summon creatures correctly again. Crystals in the astral prism can now only be broken with the orphic hammer. Certain skeletons in Kreshulik will no longer be highlighted when pressing the alt key. Fixed a vase that was creating a water surface that could not spawn fixed a potential performance issue caused by one of the turrets beneath the Emerald Grove, gave the prison guards at Moonrise Towers more fitting staves, updated the situation involving Nettie's poison so that you can use alchemy rather than her cauldron, Doozy the Dunce will now actively look for his ring in the mud, you can now cure the Zathisk debuffs with tadpoles, partial and full seromorphosis, now remove the Zathisk debuffs. Charles will no longer clone the tadpoles and souls in the mirror trial. Made it easier to select cloakers and made them sneakier at sneaking. Added some generic headlines back into the Boulder's Mouth Gazette if you generate a lot of papers. You should no longer need to disarm the crushed spark trap near the Nautilus crash site. Fixed undead thralls not using increased proficiency bonuses at higher levels. The Cambion from the Infernal Rapier can now be dismissed. You can no longer use Dimension Door on creatures that are grounded. The Transmuter Stone's cooldown can now be reset by the Potion of Angelic Slumber. Fix the Trial of Courage being half as long as necessary. Dead enemies staying in the combat and some characters not joining the combat. Fixed a Perception Check not triggering correctly in the sewers near Basilisk Gate due to a line of sight issue. Fixed the encumbered condition not always reacting correctly to changes to your weight. Characters that leave the location you are in will now have their summons dismissed. Using the ladder in Zevlor's secluded chambers is no longer forbidden. 
The sloop at Moonrise Towers Prison will no longer leave with you even if you choose to stay. Increase the range at which restoration pods work in the Ha Hall so that you can reuse them on party members who were standing far away when they were first used. Fixed character floating or squirting when they become visible, for example after cinematic dialogues. Fixed contagion poison redisappearing after one successful saving throw during stage 2 or stage 3. Fixed mind sanctuary allowing a free action if you didn't have any before entering the aura. Fixed the sharpshooter's feet not applying its penalty to offhand range attacks. Characters will now sheath the everburn blade when idle. Fix the twisting vine surface expiring early instead of ticking with combat turns. Fix the wave mother's robe not providing cold resistance. Wild shape players can no longer run around the final confrontation with Kithrik without triggering a reaction. Fix concentration not updating correctly after you load into a new region. Fix wild magic vine growth not triggering correctly for barbarians. You can no longer avoid answer by sneaking or being shapeshifted when interacting with him. Added a perception check to a particular still life painting in the lower city. Fixed a bug where switching characters right before a cinematic would cause the cinematic to not play. Talking to Topaz no longer consumes a wild shape charge. Fixed spells that would work on allies, sometimes not working on certain party members. Fixed a bug where if a player characters or NPCs stop being affected by silence spells, they can no longer talk to anyone. Fixed Minsk, not following your party even if he's grouped and recruited as a companion. Tweaked the Action Surge achievement to only allow specific spells to count multiple times. Fixed a black screen appearing at the end of the tutorial if a dead avatar is in companion's inventory. Adjusted the outer bounds of the Norona Trident. Made some especially repetitive overhead dialogues in the Emerald Grove less annoying. Fix the crawler, mucus and malice poison flasks applying weapon coating when thrown like a grenade instead of applying their poisonous conditions like other poisons. Fixed wild magic protective lights not highlighting effective allies. Fixed fist of unbroken air not applying full damage when pushing the target. Fixed some keybind options that weren't working and removed some old ones. You will no longer be thrown into the Moonrise Towers jail if the emergency lever has already been activated. All broken moon lanterns, not just Nares, can now be investigated in a dialogue. Moving on to flow and scripting. The best offense is virtually nonsense background goal for soldiers is no longer missing from the game. And Apple a day keeps the scalpel away background goal for soldiers is no longer unlocking at a wrong moment. Fix the not another soul background goal sometimes completing after the wrong combat. Fixed an issue where killing the mount flare at the Nautilid crash site triggered the fresh kindle for the fire background goal. Now it correctly triggers to sleep for a chance to dream tentacle dreams instead. During the attack of the Emerald Grove, Lump and the Ogres will no longer attack Cirrus. Fix the elevator summit stones in the gauntlet of Shaw remaining active even after the elevator has arrived at its destination. The Guardian of Faith in Kreshelik will no longer reappear after you've killed it. We've asked Shadowheart to be more careful with the mysterious artifact and not let guards take it from her when being sent to prison. Made various improvements to how the Gith react to combat in Kreshelik. Fixed a potential soft block that made it more difficult to find the self-destruct code for the Neurosata. Fixed some issues with the hostility of the eagles on top of the Rosy Morn Monastery. They will now be hostile when summoned and will no longer be hostile if you enter their nest without being spotted. Added a fade between the Dark Urge and Karlak's dialogue with Gortash and his main dialogue during the inauguration at Worm's Rock. Fixed an issue where killing Nier, Wilburn or Karlak with necrotic cold or acid damage would result in failing quests to get their heads. Fixed a bug with Gortash not attacking the Dark Urge and Karlak immediately after they choose to attack him in Worm's Rock during the inauguration. Fixed Gortash talking about clearing up mysteries twice if he is confronted by the Dark Urge and Karlak and they agree to listen to him. You no longer need to pass a survival check to find the Brewer's Alchemy Stash after learning about it from his research notes. Priestess Gut should now be more careful with her potion of sleep and not put it up for sale or drop it on death. You no longer need to pass a survival check to find the secret stash of the Blue Jay near Rosy Morn Monastery after it reveals its location. Floric now understands that if you're sneaking around her cell at Worms Rock Prison when trying to rescue her, the sneaking is for her own benefit. Fixed Astorian talking about things that are no longer relevant. 
removed an incorrect line when companion historian meets Oma after killing Kazador, fixed a rare edge case where the Dark Urge could miss the battle at the Temple of Baal, meaning Baal should have been disappointed, but they would also end up being able to choose whether to accept or resist Baal. Fed Three Piece, Bad Twin Bubbins and Kalarina the Wolf some more lines, fixed the game sometimes not recognizing that the party has met Karlak, tweaked an end game dialogue flow in case Karlak is in the party and not a mind flayer, Karlak will now enter a rage even if she was defeated and resurrected while fighting the paladins, as long as she is near where the fight happened. Karlak will no longer ask Bezel about being betrayed by Vlakath in Krashielek if it didn't happen. Characters with a dual wield of feet will no longer see their weapons duplicated in one of Shah's trials. The statues in the Gauntlet of Shah will no longer have an option to give Shadowheart permission to undertake the trial if she did not ask for it. Fix some flow issues in dialogues with the Dark Urge and Minsk. Fix the hostages getting stuck and not running to the submersible if you've left the Iron Throne when warned by Gortash and then returned later. Fix not being able to speak with Volo in Act 3 if you poisoned the Goblin's brew while Volo was performing on stage at the Goblin Camp and you didn't save him afterwards. Fix Marina appearing in Baldur's Gate if you give her to the Hag in Act 1 and fixed some save games with this bug in them if you hadn't progressed through the related quest in the city. Fix the Hag being hostile to players from the beginning of Act 3. Steel Watchers will now more correctly and consistently choose sides. Example, fight alongside a mind flayers in the outburst, in different states of the city of Baldur's Gate. Fix the dead family members in Ambrist's house disappearing. Tahira and Minsk's path are tired after you save him, meaning that if you've forsaken him, Jahira will now go after him. Fixed the Owl Bear Cub not becoming a camp follower when it should, due to choosing certain dialogue options in its scene at night. Fixed an issue causing the post credit scenes to be skipped in old save games. Your dream visitor now asks you to gather your allies if you use a waypoint to leave the Shadow Cursed Lands. All players are now presented with the option to destroy or dominate the Netherbrain regardless of the presence of the Dark Urge. The Spear of Night Marker should be removed now upon finding the room it is stored in. The Dark Urge now has a specific flow when talking to Manthara after killing Orin. You can no longer ask Avery Sanchal about Filigar more than once in the lower city. You no longer need to unlock the printer again if you haven't changed the headline yet after unlocking it once. Fixed Art Kalag, sometimes talking about someone as though he isn't right there in the room. Fixed a bug where Holson would fail to return to the Emerald Grove even though he said he would meet you there. Fixed repeating lines in the dialogue with Chow during the celebration at camp. Gale's mirror image that invites you for a private conversation should no longer talk to companions. Old Minster should no longer repeat his lines if you send him to camp and leave him there for an extended period of time. Fix some potential instances of party members becoming neutral to each other. Auntie Ethel's illusion at the entrance to her cellar should no longer appear inside the walls. Added fade into the transitions between Karga's dialogues and the druid's assault on the tieflings. Bug Thimble now exclaims before turning hostile if you interact with her coffin. Fixed some flow issues in dialogues with Jahira. Made sure the coffin maker now takes the money you offer him. Fixed not being able to talk to origin companions about Ketherick after he escapes. Added a dialogue option to allow you to refuse Raphael and enter a game over state if you'd already refused him once before. Fixed a potential blocker when trying to leave the astral prism after you've decided how to deal with Orpheus. Tidied up the dialogue flow if you used the supreme tadpole but then chose to put it away. Fixed the same dialogue with Orpheus in the astral plane triggering twice before you free him. Lezel will no longer mention Astarian coming for your neck during the camp celebration if he hasn't revealed he's a vampire yet. Fixed an issue where Brabi and Klaus at the circus entrance didn't deduct gold from your inventory. No such thing as a free clown. Fixed an issue where goblins could start a dialogue about you making a noise and waking them up even if the goblins have already left the camp. Fixed a line for the drow in Shares Caress not recognizing a client of their sibling. Fixed being able to talk to Gale about his last night if you weren't there. 
fixed an infinitely looping dialogue with Cesar, fixed the Storm Shore Tabernacle Shrine acting as though you had donated, despite no donation having been made. You can now tell Dvala, after having saved her from the serial killer, that you already killed Oren. Fixed a VO cutoff and potential dialogue blocker with the Inquisitor in the Knights of the Shield hideout. Fixed a missing ready check for inter-region waypoint travel. Made sure you go to a specific active camp for the camp night during inter-region travel. Fixed one of Florek's lines not playing after you rescue her from Wurokin's rest. You can update Ravenguard on a certain quest he had for you without having to go through his dialogue again. Move the location of Olmenstein camp so that his dialogue with Gaul is a lot more likely to happen when we wanted to. You can now talk to the captain's wolves, Urith and Dark using speak with animals. Improve the flow for the mage hand and the Grimishka in Kreshelik, in particular making it harder for it to break out of its box. Talking and submitting to the dying mind flay near the crash site will now only kill the player submitting to it rather than all companions listen in. You can no longer skip the spotted cinematic scene of the skeletons in the chapel crypt and the fight will always trigger as expected. Voss will now wait for you in the sewers if he promises to. Fixed being able to talk to Will as though you'd already met and recruited him if you'd killed Karlak before the scene at the Emerald Grove Gate. Prior to the dialogue with Oren, if her abductee was rescued by someone other than the Dark Urge, the abductee will now be teleported out so it doesn't break the jewel when they wake up. Failing to help a starring with Raphael's quest now leads to him breaking up with you. Isabel will stop repeatedly dragging you into conversation at the end of Act 2. Tubin will no longer tell the Godians to leave if they're all dead in the Steel Watch Foundry. The telescope in the Emerald Grove won't show the Red Dragon anymore if the event with the Kithyanki near the mountain pass has already happened. Companions will no longer talk about saving the crash from imminent destruction if its destruction was never triggered. Shadowheart will no longer talk about a fight with Lezol that did not happen. Fixed the heroic statue from the circus sculptor Boney getting stuck in Kolak's tent in the farm camp. Also fixed it not appearing in the Ulfson tavern camp. Changed the positions of the Orthon when he appears at the lower city camps. Fixed Boney the circus sculptor not letting you trade with him after the fight and the circus is over. You will no longer take your summons with you when teleported to the jungle by the Ginny. Fixed a dialogue with Shadowheart in the Shadowcurse land showing an empty line if you've triggered it twice. Shadowheart will no longer try to flee when attacked while she is unconscious on the beach. Fixed characters like Nine Fingers and Minsk, talking about Jahira as if she's alive and recruited if she isn't. Improved how Harlep handles crimes in the House of Hope. Synchronized the destruction of Orpheus's chains more closely with the Orphic Hammer's spell. Freed prisoners from Moonrise Tower will now react to crimes committed by players. Made sure no harmful conditions on the Emperor carry over from Act 2 to the end game. Adjusted the conditions for Harlap's follow up scene in Baldur's Gate. Avery will now give you more potent free fireworks if your allegiance is lying. Fixed Merkin's dialogue not triggering after defeating the Harpies, particularly for wild shaped characters. Jahira is now always forced out of combat groups once she is recruited or the assault on Moonrise Towers is over. Fixed Physic. Maintaining his surrender condition after being looted and fixed fleeing characters from being considered permadead in certain cases. Fixed Gale appearing in cinematic dialogues after his dramatic end. Panderna, the paralyzed tiefling, can no longer witness the guard being killed to prevent the tiefling suddenly becoming hostile, as Panderna's witness report would happen off screen. Mole no longer reports kids scatter indefinitely. Withers no longer re-engages you in dialogue from a distance after you've already entered the Watch Citadel in the upper city. Cole and Leah now react properly to Roland's death while they're in Last Light. Made sure you can talk to Saravok during the Blood Baptism if someone is standing in his way. You can now use the key you can loot from Malice Thorn to free his patient. Fix the flow for Anders' reaction of you fulfilled his request to hunt down Karlak. Fixed Gale making the same comment every time you speak to Bernard. Companions and dangerous wild shapes like wolves and bears won't stop the Dryder from escorting you to Moonrise Towers anymore. Companions will now comment when talking to the entrance guards at Moonrise Towers. You can now go through Vosh Kogan's dialogue only once, so listen up. Before the final fight when playing as Gale, you can now properly address your companions or lack thereof. 
In the Offzone Tavern, you cannot ask Lacrissa about Ophira if Ophira is already dead. The Merconade Sovereign now gives you the intended explosive, fixed an issue preventing you from reporting to Manap Nesta about explosive toys in the barn before disarming or detonating them. Fixed an issue where talking to Manap Nestor after being caught by other guards could result in him sending the player to prison. Bolo will now appear at camp immediately after being saved. Fixed Lazal triggering a discussion about the Zathisk on certain camp nights before you've used it. Committing two crimes at the same time will not always result in hostility. When the Dark Urge wakes up with blood on their hands, this should no longer provoke attacks from camp followers and the victim's fate should now be clearer if the Dark Urge is killed that same night. The conditions for paladins losing their oath that night also being refined. Fixed companions mentioning a dead tiefling in the House of Healing in Wraithwyn, even though there's only a dead goblin on the bed. Raven Guard will no longer react to crimes committed against Mazora. Oscar will no longer linger in Janus' estate if Lady Janus has kicked him out. Oscar will no longer fight Kerry in the final combat, instead he will cower. Lady Janus will no longer talk to you as if the house is haunted, if you have already exercised Kerry. Shadowheart's approval will now be affected when you loot the cache in the Albeck cave. If you don't intervene, Devala will no longer appear to die in the dialogue with Dolor and will be killed by the doppelgangers afterwards. After Dolor's soliloquy, if you pick the stealth dialogue option, you will remain in hiding after the dialogue. Olsen now shows up in other characters' dialogues at camp at the end of Act 2, fixed a repeated line in dialogue with Will about his eye. If a starian has died, you can now report this to Gandrel. After Mole alerts the guards about you, they will no longer approach with the crown dialogue multiple times. Removed some references to the sentient amulet quest when interacting with the coffins in the open hand temple crypt. If you refuse to suffer the mad monk's madness in the open hand temple crypt, party members will be surprised by the ensuing combat. Minthara will now speak to you if you kill Saza near her. You can no longer tell Zevlor to do as Kaga says if she's dead. The end game dialogue that begins when dominating the crown of Cassus will now play even if you have downed characters. Your dream visitor should continue to refuse to speak to characters without tadpoles in their brains. Fixed an issue where deep gnomes would disappear after being saved in Grimforge and resting if you didn't talk to them, which resulted in the quest to save them being blocked. Killing the Emperor at the end of Act 2 will no longer trigger a game over. Fixed the Hag in Act 3 being hostile by default if you have attacked her in the tea house before she has escaped to her lair in Act 1. Fixed an issue where Saza gets stuck waiting at the entrance to the goblin camp if she was rescued from the Emerald Grove. Fixed an issue relating to Lump and the Ogars killing Ceres if they were summoned during their attack on the Emerald Grove and both Asherak and Zevlar are dead. Quests to save Ravenguard won't wrongly state that he is in the Iron Throne if you skipped Kortash's ceremony. You can no longer send items to camp during the end game state. Made sure Ravenguard is at camp after you rescue him from the Iron Throne. Fixed Mazora's camp dialogue where she offers a pact concerning Ravenguard not triggering if Ravenguard was knocked out during Gortasha's ceremony. Fixed a crash when attacking Chihira's children in a specific party setup. Fixed a scenario players in the endgame could kill the Emperor but would still continue playing. NPCs no longer react to bard performances if the bard is in combat, fixes spamming of reactions. Moving on to journal, improved the journal updates for Lazol in Act 3, updated some objectives and entries in the deal with the devil and save hope quests to be more granular and precise, added a new quest step for when you kill Saravok before finding Valeria at the murder tribunal. Olsen's Act 1 quest now closes with the correct update even if you manage to skip a couple of his scenes. The Find Mystic Carrion Servant quest will now close properly if you give Thrumbo or Thrumbo's Jar to Mystic Carrion. Fixed an issue with the journal flow for the Hellion's Heart. The journal will now know whether you already know about the three goblin leaders. A journal entry will now unlock when you show Valeria the murder weapon. Made journal improvements for the Lifting the Curse quest so it's easier to know where to meet Helsen. 
The Hero's Quest updates correctly in Act 2 now if you recruit to right away rather than waiting until Act 3 to update. Fixed journal markers lead into hidden doors in the Goblin Camp. The journal now provides a better guidance about what to do after freeing Minthara from Moonrise Towers. The journal and dialogues for Lazole in Act 3 will now correctly reference past events when she's left in camp. Added a journal update for Lazole's quest when you find out how to enter the House of Hope. Improved journal feedback when progressing through Karlak's quest to upgrade her Infernal Engine. Making a deal with the rats in the Gauntlet of Shaal will only close the Break Yoga's contract quest when you discover their importance to Yoga's contract. The journal updates regarding Betraying Holson are now more accurate. Moving on to writing. <laughs> Fixed an unpolished subtitle in a dialogue between Astorian and Kazador. Removed a spell description for Guardian Bolt that was unique to the controller you are. The same one is used everywhere now. Added a law description to the Ring of Murderous Opportunity. Amended the Muddy Condition description to mention slowing not halting affected targets. Gave two Divination Wizard Prophecy abilities exciting names. Fixed an incorrect dragon name. Added text to indicate dragon landing spots in the combat at the Ha Hall. Fixed the names of levitating platforms in the mind of the Netherbrain. Made several tweaks to tooltips for clarity and accuracy, such as the Divine Strike variant, Sneak Attack, and Koreska's Poison. Updated the Dance Macabre tooltip to not mention corpses. Fixed several text issues like typos and mismatches between subtitles and VO. You can no longer bring up Mistra before you know about her when talking to Gale after the camp celebration. Rewrote a book to align more closely with Dragonborn lore. Updated the descriptions for Gales and Astorian's camp clothing. Altered symbiotic entity description to specify that the extra damage works on unarmed strikes too. Warding Bond spell tooltip now mentions that the caster shares damage with a warded ally. The uncanny dodge tooltip now mentions that it is a reaction. The content should now correspond with the titles in the books about Saloon and Shaw in the Owlbear Cave. Fixed some flow issues and reworded a dialogue option for Avatar Gale to make it clearer that Gale explodes on the top of the netherbrain alone. Fixed a blank dialogue option when talking to Holson. Updated the descriptions for the debuffs given by the Zathisk to suggest a possible solution. Reworded a dialogue option to make it clearer that you are inviting a kiss from Will. Amended half orc savage attacks to mention the correct amount of extra damage dice on a critical hit. Clarified in the Illithid Powers tutorial pop-up that tadpoles are a shared party resource. Cambions in the House of Hope are now called Vengeful Cambions. Fix the blood of Lathander's Sunbeam tooltip incorrectly stating you can recast it in combat for free. Rewrote Hunter's Ranger's level 11 multi-attack ability to explain the separate attack rolls against targets. Amended a Sage background goal to be less misleading. Changed the incorrectly named Mirror Trial to Self Same Trial. Added an upcast damage description to the Cloud Kill tooltip. Fixed the upcast description for Gaseous Form. Corrected the information on the Blight Spell tooltip about the effect on plant creatures. Avatar Lazo no longer ends up with only one choice in the confrontation with Shadowheart in camp. Updated the lore description of the floral key to Frago's Flophouse. Added a display name for a secret door in the lower city. Added dialogue options for players who don't have the Orphic Hammer to declare to the Emperor that they're going to try to find a way to free Orpheus. So long as Raphael is alive and able to show up to offer that solution. Added a sub-region name for the Hag Survivor Basement. Going into loot and trade. One of the chests in the Emerald Grove now has more treasure. Fixed mean locks not carrying any belongings. Added some missing poison ingredients in the brewer's stash. The Banart Clerk at Felagoy's Fireworks will now sell free samples. The Steel Watch Tartar now carries infernal metal. Improved the loot for Auntie Ethel when she's in the city. Added treasure to the buried mound revealed by the Blue Jay near Rosie Morn Monastery. Added more gold to the Risen Road Toll House treasure. Stone Mason Kith, Ajakinia Jaira, and Enthol Danthalon now sold scrolls of Revivifar. Servants of Umberli now carry more Balonins. 
Fix the pouch in Worms Crossing, missing its treasure. Fix the pockets of Shaw Sentinels in the Shaw and Sanctuary. Added more valuables to the chest from the Rescue the Trapped Man quest. Wargs now drop Warg fans. There are now fewer empty bottles in alcohol related loot. Looting Kaga and the Shadow Druids is now permitted if you enter combat with them. All Grimishka nests will now have loot. Looting the corpses of the goblins' well kills during the fight at the Emerald Grove's front gate is now permitted. Alchemical elixirs aren't as rare for higher levels anymore. Keys now cost 1 gold instead of 0. Fix being able to barter for the whole rider's pride reward. Fixed magic items not spawning correctly at the traders in rare situations in Act 1. Slightly tweak the frequency of hyena ear drops. Going into character creation and level ups. Skill proficiency selection has been fixed on both keyboard and controller. Removed a frame delay at the end of the Origins introductions during character creation. Fixed an issue where characters were unable to skip the Origin character introductions when they played. Elf ears were no longer clipped through helmets on the level up screen. Fixed Drow not receiving the Dancing Lights cantrip in character creation. Fixed the voices of your guardian in character creation appearing in reverse order when using a controller. Going on to items now. Fixed an issue where you could store items in containers that cannot be opened such as destructive barrels. Boxes of fireworks will now specify the damage that can be done if they explode. Fixed a bug where adding items to the chest of the mundane changed the weight of an item. Fixed an issue where the chest of the mundane stopped functioning as intended once you arrived in Worms Crossing. Fixed some unreachable items in the Underdark. Fixed some unreachable items on a desk near the slack skin head in the Necrotic Laboratory. Fixed several unreachable items in the House of Healing Surgery Room. Fixed some unreachable loot on the Nautiloid. Going on to the UI and tooltips, fix the vitriol of Shadow Root sack being displayed twice in the alchemy panel. Fix the crystalline lens or chemical ingredient being highlighted in orange as an important story item. Made it easier to tell which settings you can't change due to a previous choice. Improved the formatting of the radial customization pop-up. Fixed some text overlap issues with the bonuses in the active role screens. Fixed various issues with the minimap render in several locations. Specified that the savage attacker feat applies to melee weapon attacks. Supreme and Astral Tadpoles are now properly highlighted in orange as story items. Fixed the minimap, not updating when walking into Last Light Inn. Made it easier to understand which dialogue option was selected when listening into a conversation in multiplayer and made sure it stays on the screen for longer. Map objective text will now wrap if the line is too long. Fixed layout issues with waypoints on the minimap and added extra messaging for when fast travel is blocked. Unarmed attack tooltips will now display bonuses correctly. Added several tutorial entries back to the journal. Fixed the icon and duration in the tooltip for improved mine illusion. Prevented containers from automatically closing when you click take all, if not all items are actually taken. For example, if you've over encumbered. Fixed item and spell bonuses been incorrectly displayed in the role you are for characters who are incapacitated in some way, for example unconscious or concentration broken. Fix some monk spell tooltips not displaying their unarmed strike boost bonuses. Fix tooltip titles and durations overlapping. The tutorial for the item context menu is delayed until the end of combat at the Emerald Grove gate. Prevented the Orphic favor aura from spamming overhead and in the combat log. Fixed the combat log displaying the wrong tooltip for psionic backlash. To avoid showing two very similar warning messages, we added a line that will tell you why you can't load or save the game if the reason for both is the same. Fixed messages that explain why an action or spell is unavailable that were only showing the cause and or that were not showing in the hotbar. Fixed the cloud of daggers tooltip specifying the incorrect amount of damage when upcasted at 4th level. Attempting to long rest when in a zone where it's impossible now shows the right error message. The short rest tutorial will no longer pop up when you're at camp. Made general optimization improvements and cleanups to the UI. Updated the cooldown system of the hotbar to avoid certain actions being disabled after you use them once. Fixed the remarkable athlete proficiency bonus not getting added to the active role UI. Fixed missing approval ratings in the character sheet. 
added Grant Flart's missing up course description, fixed the RBAT SPO not displaying the condition in its tooltip correctly, fixed the Charles Embrace condition missing an icon, fixed the empty facial hair tab for Drow in character creation, who can't have facial hair anyway, fixed the icon for emeralds, fixed lightning error not specifying the roll top in its tooltip, fixed the shield spell tooltip specifying the duration of the spell incorrectly, fixed tooltips for bardic inspiration not updating the recharge time after level 5, fixed throw spell such as telekinesis not showing their range in tooltips, fixed tooltips not reopening after you've closed pin tooltips or the party lines when using the controller, fixed translation not found Trend for spell targets in the combat log. Fix one spell of the journal you are temporarily disappearing if a player exits split screen while it is open. Fix several UI issues when playing with controller relating to panels and tooltips. Fix origin portraits in character creation when playing with a controller after returning from the guardian customization screen. Fix the run spell save DC and spell attack values appearing in character creation when proceeding to edit your guardian and then going back to edit your character. Fixed the incorrect icon for orange dagger, the unavailable spell not prepared error message for reactions no longer overlaps other text, move the error messages that tell you when you can't do something to the hotbar if the reason for the restriction is a condition, translated the manage experiences button for managing your illithid powers, improved the performance of the minimap when new map markers appear or old ones disappear, Fixed a rare case of the level up you are not appearing. Fixed passives and bonuses not showing up on the initial screen on level up for rangers of the hunter subclass. Added a campfire icon to the tutorial pop-up window. Cosmetically updated map warnings and made them less transparent. Added a new icon to more clearly distinguish exiting camp and going to camp. Fixed the death saving throw you are disappearing after saving the game. Fixed missing text for the advantage, reason for the knocked out condition, fixed some denizens of the emerald grove showing up as traders on the map even if they had nothing to trade, fixed the salts of copper shavings recipe being listed thrice in the list of alchemical recipes, fixed the active search tutorial pop-up disappearing too early before you approach the gate to the emerald grove, fixed the active search tutorial pop-up showing the run button prompt, Small shovels will no longer automatically take up a slot in your hotbar. Remove the zero that appeared for concentration spells that don't expire after a specific number of turns. Players using controllers are now able to see their character tags correctly. Players using controllers will now be able to skip the level up intro animation. Fixed a localization issue for spellbook category names. Fix the icons for resources and reactions overlapping on the hotbar at higher level ups, fixed the text about concentration being cut off on split screen when too long, fixed HTML tags being visible in the journal, fixed feet selection during level up in some multi-class combinations while using a controller, fixed the encumbrance icon's heart in tutorial messages. Moving to level design and map, fixed unreachable dig mines across the game, Positioned the camp chest a little better at Moonrise Towers and the Ulfson Tavern. Fixed an issue causing the shroud to not clear when you enter the silent library in the coordinate of Shaw. Added some scenery to a small inaccessible alcove in the lower city to make it clear that it's inaccessible. Fixed a small pocket in the shadow fall area where no actions could be taken. Made camera improvements in the hag's lair. Fixed the crash Yelik entrance camera rotation so you face the correct way upon entering. Fixed Kua Tua entrance camera rotation so you face the correct way upon entering. Fix some camera issues around the cragged rock in the Ahobe cave. Fix some fading issues in the ogre and bugbear's barn. Fixed moon vista shadows. Fix some floating items in the Nautilus crash site and a stretched texture. Players will now be able to access a secret floor in the house of healing. Fix a brazier in the dank crypt in the chapel being non-interactable. Parts of the Knoll Cave won't disappear anymore due to a camera fix. Guards outside will no longer incorrectly join the fight in Figaro Shop. Fixed several fading and camera issues in Kreshulik. Adjusted the location of a diggable mound in Kreshulik. Adjusted the location of a diggable mound in the Underdark. 
Fixed an incorrectly fading walkway in the Worms Crossing region. Fixed a platform being stuck under the lava in Crim Forge when trying to forge a second adamantine weapon. Fixed a roof fading bug in the Steel Watch Foundry. The door leading to the Shadow Fell in the Gauntlet of Shah is now protected by Arcane Lock. Opening the ornate mirror in the Blighted Village will now clear the shroud behind it. The Crimson Draft subregion of the low region now spans the entire house. The portal to the House of Hope will no longer be visible after traveling back to the lower city. Fixed floors being darkened on the minimap when entering Last Light. Created taller triggers when changing floors via jumps and ladders to fix the minimap briefly showing the run floor. Fix the run floor texture showing up on the minimap behind the waterfall by the goblin camp. Fix some floating rocks in the Albear Cave. Fix the minimap not matching up precisely with where stairs are in the upper city near the high hall. Tweak the hover visibility of a secret crumbling wall in Crash Helix so it's not as easy to find. Added a minimap marker for the entrance door to the chapel so it's easier to find the way out. Added missing quest details to the map for the high harper. Tweak the placement of some objects in the high hall. Shifted the placement of a tiny hole in the Ha Hall. Fixed the fading on a skull that hangs on a post. Fixed some fading issues around the bar where you find the ogre and the bugbear. Fixed a fading terrain issue on Joaquin's rest. Fixed a gap in the ground outside Rosie Morn Monastery that would make it look like you were walking in the air. Fixed some stairs in the Undercity Ruins getting visually cut off too early which made it hard to climb up them. Fixed a cage on the upper floor of Dantelon's Dancing Axe, not fading away when you're on the floor beneath it. Fixed a table not fading away in Frego's Flophouse. Fixed a chain not fading away in the Audience Hall at Worm's Rock. Fixed a beam not fading away in a floating cage in Auntie Ethel's Tea House. Fixed an area where you could get stuck by a window in the Cellunite Outpost in Underdark. Fixed several item fading issues in Candle Hallow's Tombstones. Fixed certain areas for the Grimforge lava not dealing damage. Fixed some floating objects and terrain paint in the Underdark. Made the quest marker for the Iron Throne more suitable in the Save the Gondians quest. Made one of the map markers in Moonrise Tower secret. Updated an incorrectly named map marker in the Chamber of Loss. Fixed issues with unwalkable areas in and around the Harpies behind the Emerald Grove. Shadowheart's childhood graffiti now shows up on the wall properly. A goblin corpse in the whispering depths no longer clips with the terrain. Using the doors to go into the inner goblin camp shouldn't rotate the camera as much. Going on to animation now. On higher frame rates fixed an issue where sometimes the open close sounds of doors would play after the door had finished opening or closing. Fixed Carlax animations not playing correctly before her recruitment dialogue. Updated skinning on footwear. Dismissing familiars doesn't pause anymore before actually dismissing. Fixed body parts going through the wave mother's robe. Fixed a hairstyle that was showing visual artifacts when the head moved around on the strong male body type. Fixed a seam between tiefling bodies and their tails. Adjusted a half orc neck type so it doesn't clip with armor. Tweaked a male human head so it fits better with a strong body type. Fixed eyelashes clipping on tiefling children. Updated the placement of piercings on tiefling head types. Piercings will no longer be seen through the mask of the shapeshifter when worn. Fixed mean locks T-posing when killed. Improved the fit of certain gloves and armors. Adjusted a male human head so it fits the strong body type better. Adjusted a half orc head to avoid clipping with armor. Adjusted a tiefling child head to avoid their eyelashes clipping and added custom emotion poses. Fixed the hitbox of the cloaker and improved their sneaking animation. Made it look a bit more like Gothric Rillen came out of his coffin rather than appearing out of nowhere. Fixed the incorrect combat animations playing for Lazol. Fixed animations not playing on NPCs when seeking invisible player characters. Fixed large skeletoids like Death Shepherds using the Ron walking animation. Fixed Karlak playing the Ron prepare animation for Reckless Spell when she is not raging to fix her weapon clipping through her head. Fixed broken head animations for the Displacer Beast. Improved the fit of male and female tiefling tails for the strong body type. Fixed a gap between the tail and the body on strong male tieflings. Updated the trousers for female vampire spawn to reduce stretching at their cuffs. Fixed clipping on Rin male for male characters and a collapsed stomach on scale male on male halflings. Fixed female half orcs shins disappearing when wearing the barbarian outfit without shoes. Fixed floating and clipping headwear. Fixed stretch paws on cats and dogs. 
fix Raphael Tipo then upon death, fixed up some jerky movement in the torsos of male humans, added a fix to stop animations from popping when a character's bodily attitude changes during cinematics, fix some missing animations for allies during the end game. Going on to art, fix some light streaming through a crack in the cave wall in the background image of the main menu screen, we mushed some wet clay between the rocks and that seems to have done the job, added blood and dirt to the mangled dwarf corpse in the ogre hut, fixed a bolt clipping with padded armor on strong and half orc characters, fixed a texture seam on the drider's chest, fixed Martina Kostaka's skirt clipping when she walks around, fixed Lumbar having a translucent hood, so much for anonymity, updated Duke Stormane's visuals to ensure her look is consistent, remove Stonemason Kitha's clown makeup, dress some unintentionally bold and naked absolute cultist corpses in the city sewers, fixed Stonemason Kith's sleeves clipping through his gloves, remove Grandjaw's clown makeup, we're not sure how the heat of Grimforge didn't melt it off, with human female strong and female half orc body types, Fix lower legs becoming invisible when wearing certain barbarian armor and no shoes. Fix clipping on hobgoblin NPCs wearing clothing. Fix clipping on Karen's shirt in the circus. Fixed the unwanted masterwork scale mail looking stretchy on strong female body types. Fixed Karlak wearing a bra that wasn't hers. Updated Fion's appearance to look more like Dolar. Aurelia the vampire spawn's eyes will now be red as opposed to white fixed a seam on Dame Aelin's neck, tweaked how our color system interprets Lazal's trousers to make dials work better on them, fixed some gaps in male Githyanki's plate armor, fixed some helmet hair, fixed certain clothing and shoes not showing your chosen skin color, fixed characters hair floating away from them, fixed the inside of the collar of Shadowheart's camp clothes being transparent, tweaked the art for some collars, tweaked how our color system interprets Quartash's clothes to make Dars work better on them, added a missing symbol to the portrait of Vlakith in Kreshielik, removed symbols from weapon textures to avoid their misinterpretation, fixed the barrels next to the hyenas along the risen road clipping with a cart, created a new version of the mask worn by Iron Console Nuff to avoid clipping on half-orc faces, made a minor adjustment to Gale's camp shirt, made Mythara's camp top ever so slightly less revealing, added extra cliffs around the tollhouse vista as it was showing the edge of the world, fixed several instances in Kreshelik, the Underdark and the Gauntlet of Shah of the scenery disappearing when moving the camera inside cliffs at certain angles, added a ceiling to the tollhouse basement to fix fading issues, upscaled a low resolution texture for some mushrooms in the underdark, filled up a gap in the rock formation beneath Moonrise Towers, made sure the door leading to Shadow Cursed Lands from Grinforge matches the one in the cinematic dialogue, fixed a floating heavy stone in the Owl Bear Cave, added visuals for old moldy pouches, fixed some blurry landscape decor in the Shadow Cursed Lands, the main doors in Worms Fortress doesn't scale down anymore after being destroyed, fixed a visible seam on the terrain textures in the Emerald Grove, changed the color of Kethrick's throne in Moonrise Tower, added a new color variation of the clown makeup for the A Clown in Town condition set by Dolly Dolly Dolly, added new visuals for If You Cursed by Dolly Dolly Dolly, improved the background art around Baldur's Gate, particularly in the scene about the identity of the Emperor, fixed Gale's trousers at camp clipping with his shirt, fixed invisible arms on Cressa Bone Daughter, fixed makeup colors appearing on random parts of Dragonborn heads in character creation like their hair and horns, fixed Peter Jackson's clipping belt, fixed a dark section on Mazora's dress, fixed clipping issues for different races wearing the bone spark gloves, fixed circlets causing hair to fade through hoods, Tweaked the position of the tent in the Emerald Grove where you can find Auntie Ethel because she was hard to spot. Fixed some stretched terrain visible from the cliffs by the beach behind the Emerald Grove. Fixed several minor issues with items in the apothecary shop in the blighted village, like floating bottles and inaccessible bottle racks. Fixed some floating and clipping books and notes. Fixed some floating scenery in the Albear Cave. Fixed several visual artifacts and glitches in the Guild Hall. Fixed Astorian's cuff laces clipping through his worn gloves. 
fixed the ice bark robe missing its texture when equipped by female dwarves, fixed a visible seam on sharp ass slug's neck, optimized lighting in the high hall, added fancier waist bins in the Boulder's Month Gazette Bolden. Moving on to audio, made several mixing adjustments across the game, tweaked the audio to make it sound like vocalizations are coming from the head rather than the body in several dialogues across the game, polished character vocalizations in several dialogues across the game, adjusted audio levels for breathing sounds in several dialogues across the game, fixed a sound issue with the Malice Storm scene, fixed a sound issue with Withers rising from the tomb, fixed a sound issue with Kethrick in the assault on Moonrise Tower scene, fixed an issue with fading during Kethrick's fight on the rooftop, fixed music cues in Lazel's confrontation with Vlacketh, added several tweaks and polish to music cues throughout, added a music transition in our story and scene in the ritual room of Cazador's palace, removed music during the final scene with Withers, silence for the dead please. Music will now be muted during dialogues with companions and solo avatars in the endgame. Adjusted the audio levels for the music in some fight scenes, extended the music to play through the whole credits, increased volume on music during the Grimforge boss fight, added sounds like screams, grunts and laughter in various dialogues where needed, updated the music states during the pressure lick destruction sequence, fixed the music and ambient sounds in character creation not stopping when a split screen player disconnects, fixed the music stuttering during the credits, removed excess bass from the pin sound, fixed an issue with fire causing some other sounds to not play properly, updated character vocals and footsteps, optimized performance by stopping sounds that are so quiet that they are inaudible anyway, adjusted the background noises and levels of the Nautilid in the upper city, adjusted the mixing on some of the level up inspiration point and UR sounds, adjusted the mixing and background audio in the dialogue where Omolem enters your mind to talk about the Iron Throne. Mixed the audio in the intimate scene with a drow at Charest Caress. Adjusted volumes in the cutscene where you first step out of the pod on the Nautilid. Added some pained breaths for Petros. Fixed the music for the goblin festivities in the goblin camp, continuing to play after everyone's left for the raid. Added some sound resources for the Albear Cub. Lowered the music volume in Kolak's scene after defeating Gortash so that the dialogue can be heard better, adjusted the music volume in Kylak's final scene, fixed the wrong music playing during the Kreshulik destruction sequence. Moving on to SFX or sound effects, made sound effect fixes and polishing dialogues across game, adjusted sound effects, ambience and music levels during several dialogues in the colony and at Worms Crossing, the lower city and camp, mixed the sound effects for dialogues in the Stormshore Tabernacle, Pogrom's Mansion, Cazador's Palace and the House of Hope, added new sound effects and adjusted the position of voices and other sounds in one of the endgame scenes, Fix the sound effects getting cut off when Anso uses Storm Heart Nova in combat, removed some unneeded sound effects in the dialogue with Osterian after combat with Kazador, updated the mixing in the scene where you confront the Netherbrain for a better balance between music and sound effects, added unique sound effects for detect thoughts to distinguish it from entering people's minds using your tadpole, Added sound effects for sounds made by creatures like hyenas, ravens and flesh golems. Adjusted audio levels and sound effects in several places across the game like for armor, kissing and punching. Fixed the sound effects for entering someone's mind being too loud in several scenes across the game. Fixed gate sound effects triggering late after combat in Kazador's palace. One of the male origin voices will make quieter paint sounds during the incubus romance in the house of hope. Fix the wrong sound effects for items being moved in inventory. Fix the wrong sound effects when looted containers. Fix the missing sound effects for both Drangborn and Half Orc crossbow animations. Fix missing sound effects for cage door closing and opening. Fix missing sound effects for step of the winds disengage and prepare actions. Fix missing sound effects for preparing bards flourish spells. Fix missing sound effects when entering the counter charm aura. Fix missing door sound effects. Fixed missing sound effects for the Umbral Transport in the Gauntlet of Shaw. Fixed missing sound effects for the Minotaur's Charge Action. Fixed missing sound effects when destroying the Umbral Tremor Portal in the Gauntlet of Shaw. Fixed missing sound effects for No Soul Offering Action. Fixed the sound effects for Nature Step being too loud. Fixed missing sound effects for when the Ogos in the Blighted Village disappear. Fixed looted containers making the wrong sound. Fixed missing sound effects for fairy wrens. Fixed missing sound effects for the bow that summons Balthazar's flesh column. 
Fix missing sound effects for preparing wild shape water myrmidons healing vapors action. Fix missing sound effects for the R snarf projectile. Fix missing sound effects for the githyanki parry passive. Fix missing sound effects for preparing wild shape panthers prowl action. Fix missing sound effects for repulsion mines in crash yelic. Made several other minor tweaks for mixing and missing sound effects. Tweaked the sound effects during Gale's dramatic end with the three chosen in the colony. Going on to visual effects. Crawler mucus and dry poison cloud surfaces now show a visible cloud effect. Removed smoke VFX above the lodge as there is no longer a chimney. Fixed VFX not rendering on some scenery. Assigned some paladin effects and animations to Menthara soul branding buff. Fixed a fire not coming directly out of a brazier in the Undercity Ruins. Fixed missing VFX during gameplay for the Scra screen in the Steel Watch Foundry. Fixed missing VFX in the scenes before and after the combat at Kazadol's Palace and some issues with decorations. Fixed some overly bright lava VFX in the cutscenes in Grimforge where you turn the valve and fixed other VFX spawning into the shot abruptly. Fixed some low poly VFX decorations covering the pods on the nether brain, adjusted the VFX on Dora Kim's palm in Sorcerer's Sundries, fixed a trailer light coming out of Dolly 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 inconsistently, added missing VFX to the brewer scene, fixed Kalax flames during her recruitment dialogue not dying down on certain paws, made some VFX tweaks to the scene with Malice Thorm and the nurses in the House of Healing, fixed the VFX we use for tadpoling into people's minds remaining after the mind flayers are defeated. Added missing VFX for tadpoling into people's minds in the scene in the Iron Throne where Will and Raven God are united. Added missing VFX for tadpoling into people's minds in the main dialogue with Minsk. Fixed VFX issues in the dialogue after combat with Kazadol. Fixed the lighting on magic weapons in cinematic dialogues. And now we're going on to cinematics. Made general improvements to cameras, pops, mocap and staging in many dialogues across the game, added custom touches and polishes to many dialogues across the game, cleaned up the mocap in many dialogues across the game, fixed a twisting forearm in one dialogue and a twisting elbow in another, fixed the position of Orange's daggers in her Temple of Baal scene, fixed issues with Orange's mocap in her Temple of Baal scene, fixed some arm positions for strong male humans for example when drinking with a brewer, Added a new animation for Shadowheart's romance for better continuity. Fixed a barrel clipping with the brewer's pops. Your tentacles no longer clip with your armor when you undergo complete thermorphosis. As a historian, fixed popping and clipping issues in his hunger scene at camp. Fixed dragonborn avatars blocking the camera when they wake up in camp because Ostorian is biting them. Ensured everyone makes it to their bedroll when they aren't feeling well without clipping into one another. Added some idol animations for Myrmidons and Elementals. Fixed Jahira's jitterings in her dialogue with Tate. Moved Kazador's staff away from the camera in the dialogue before combat. Fixed the strange ox in the Watch Citadel rearing up at you oddly, flipping upside down and blinking in at you as though nothing's wrong. Fixed animation issues in Shadowheart's romance scene. Smooth some pops during transitions between lines while romance in Shadowheart. Lord knows you need all the help you can get. Fix some mocap issues in the dialogue after combat with Kazador. Fix the Drider's jittery legs when you find and talk to him in the Shadow Curse lands. Improved streaming in textures and model details in the Night on Flight cinematic scene. Overall prevent character animations popping when going in and out of cinematic scenes. Fix Dragonborn's arms flipping in a romantic scene with Shadowheart. Fix the Drider dipping into the ground during one line. Fixed four ground lighting and updated lighting positions and intensities, fixed pops and cleaned up the mocap on Orin in the Temple of Baal, address some tentacle clipping issues if you become a mind flayer, ensured the correct animations play for halflings when instructing us on the Nautilid, made sure bears close their eyes when they sleep, fixed the mocap for one of Nia's lines so he's no longer kicking in the sky, fixed stretchy legs during Holson's dialogues, fixed hand positions for short races when interacting with the console near Shadheart on the Nautilid, improved the appearance of giving Bernard a nice hug for players with a strong female human body type, removed jittering mocap in the dialogue where Lazole is in a cage near the Nautilid crash site, fixed pedal hands in several dialogues, 
fix Marina remaining in her sheep state but talking as though she was cured in old Carlo's place, fix character legs clipping through a tree trunk in the owlbear cub scene at camp, tweaked some cameras in dialogue with Holson, made sure the cinematics flow well in dialogues with new lines for Will and the narrator, fix some pops between lines in the dialogue between Holson and Carga, improved facial expressions and camera angles in Will's dialogue about Duke's domain, made sure characters aren't facing a wall in the crown dialogue that triggers when interacting with a forbidden item, fixed an issue causing Jahira to teleport off screen at Moonrise Towers, fixed Anders twitchy leg and removed an unnecessary camera shot, smoothed animations during Mazora's big arrival scene, fixed an interrupted cinematic no during Lazel's camp and celebration scene, made cinematic adjustments to account for a fix to a flow issue where Lazel could talk about Asterion's hunger even if you didn't know about it yet, fixed Dragonborn's chest blocking Lazel's body in a camp night, fixed multiple issues with cameras, clipping and animation quirks in the initial dialogue with Chihira at the bridge into Last Light, fixed where Dame Aelin is looking in Sorcerer Sundries, fixed some unusual character position in the confrontation between Aridon and Zevlor particularly for Dragonborns, adjusted the cameras in the dialogue with Farlane at Worms Crossing to better reflect who is talking to whom, lowered Roger Gherkin's head position in a cinematic dialogue, fixed a half-orc guard's lines being cut off in Gortash's audience hall at Worms Rock, fixed some play expressions that didn't suit the tone of Lazel's dating dialogue, fixed a lighting pop when speaking to Auntie Ethel in the Emerald Grove, fixed the citizens of Baldur's Gate looking like they were walking in the ground in the scene after the city is saved, fixed an issue with a joking dagger when stabbing Kazador in his coffin, fixed some empty spaces in dialogues, fixed the cinematic ending too early when you slow down the windmill with a trapped gnome on it, fixed some cinematics sometimes showing the wrong location, fixed the facial expressions of companions when talking to Gael about his background, fixed Orin's hair sometimes behaving strangely when transformed into a smaller race, fixed issue with animation blends when tadpoling into Nero's mind in dialogue, Fixed an issue with who's speaking in the dialogue where you find a hunk of spider meat. Fixed vibration on Mazora's winds. Tweaked some issues with companion characters in the dialogue at the Morphic Pool. Tweaked scenes where larger characters weren't fitting in frame properly. Updated shots of Barker's root flying off the windmill. Fixed the new introduction in the dialogue you get when you interact with a mysterious artifact. Paladins can now drink the potion in the dialogue with Priestess Gut. Fixed a pop in the dialogue you get when you interact with the Book of a Dead gods, fixed a blocked camera in the crime dialogue when you use a forbidden item, fixed some camera issues in the dialogue with Araj and Moonrise Styles, fixed characters looking in the wrong direction and appearing in the wrong version in the dialogue with Spore in the Underdark, adjusted the posture of goblins in some dialogues to improve how they look at the player, fixed an NPC flying into frame from off screen in the dialogue where a doppelganger gives you a certain task, Shadow Heart no longer pops at the end of her dialogue when she enters the gauntlet of Shaw for the first time, fixed Carlac's eyes flickering slightly after you send Mythora to the Emerald Grove, made general improvements to the dialogue with Will about Florica and Mazora, adjusted weapons so that they don't block the camera in the dialogue with the Iron Hand gnomes and the underdog, added some polished cameras emotional expressions to dialogue with Lump the Enlightened and Friends, fixed the last line getting cut off during dialogue with Physic, fixed some persistent looping sounds in the cinematic dialogue where you see an image of the three chosen. Tweaked Edwin's pose a bit, fixed Gale's paddle hands in his default dialogue, paddles are for astral boats only. Smoothed out some of the animation wrinkles in the final confrontation with the netherbrain, tweaked animations during the scene where your dream visitor visits you to avoid hands clipping into bellies, tweaked and updated some of the animations and fixed hand poses and clipping with the lyre for halflings in the scene when you summon the dried in the shadow curse lands, the newly transformed mind flayer in the pod on the Nautilid now has better hand animations and more dynamic body animations. Your fingers now make better contact with your lips after a scorching kiss with Karlak. Fix the position of Dragonborns after Ostarian gets a tasty snack at camp. Gave Celeritus fell a spinal adjustment so he can look you in the eye in certain scenes. Dialogues will now temporarily remove your wild shape form for the duration of the dialogue to fix some cinematic quirks. Removed a duplicated character and fixed issues with clipping and character poses in the dialogue with the null door in the hag's lair. Fixed companions blocking the camera and clipping into the raft in the underdark. Removed an unexpected head movement in the dialogue with Mole and Raphael at last light. 
improved cinematic fidelity for Shaul and Cavill during camp celebration, touched up Withers' cinematic fidelity during his dialogue in the endgame, fixed a broken flow of dialogue nodes during Lord Gortash's inauguration, anything for the Archduke, made sure Jahira's voice lines don't get cut off in her dialogue in the last light in, no one interrupts the high harper, adjusted the camera in the dialogue with Brenner, Andrek and Edwin, fixed some minor issues in the dialogue after you free Nero, made some tweaks to the cutscene where the illusion in the sunlight woodlands molts away after you interact with one of the sheep, updated the cameras to show the Sharon altar on a certain path in the shadow curse lands, fixed an issue that was causing pops to appear in the first frame of certain dialogues, fixed visual artifact during one of the Osterian's part scenes, added some transformation sound effects and visual effects to Raphael's final transformation dialogue, fixed some poses and floating animations in dialogue with Saravok at the murder tribunal, cleaned up Thizzabold Thorns weirdly twisting pups, made sure no one has accidental double swords during the scene where you and the Harpers ambush the Dryder's caravan, made it so background characters are given Shadowheart and the knights on their full attention during their cinematic scene, moved a camera in the scene where Shadowheart meets with her parents in the Sharon Grotto to prevent characters from fading in and out. Reduce the depth of field on the water in the establishing shot of the scene where you can go swimming with Shadowheart. Hit the knife and the rock at appropriate times in the fight between Shadowheart and Lezol at camp. Fix some VO that wasn't playing in the dialogue with both of Zor and in another with Karlak at camp. Made some tricks to the cinematic dialogue with Wilburn after you break him out of prison to avoid clipping and awkward camera angles. Fix some issues in the scene with the Kuatoa about Berwal. Fixed an issue causing the cameras to behave strangely in the scene with Jahira at Moonrise Towers. Fixed a broken camera in a scene at Casadel's Palace. Ironed out some quirks in the dialogue that plays if you steal an item. Fixed some issues with cameras and where characters are looking in the dialogue with Florica at last light. And when Shadowheart meets Viconia at the House of Grief. Tweaked a camera shot in the dialogue with Will after Mazora's initial visit. Added new touches to account for a new lines in the dialogue with the echo of Emelison in the murder tribunal. Players will no longer be blocked by a visual artifact during conversation with Glut. The Guardian Gate vision is no longer pitch black when the Master Knight Sovereign reveals its reward to the player. Lighting has been fixed for the voice of the absolute cinematic. Minsk no longer disappears in the middle of dialogue. Fixed a clipping issue between Gale's arms and his clothes where he kneels. Fixed issues with Nim Orla's hands. Fixed a sitting angle for female dwarves and characters with a strong male body type. Fixed several camera shots in the dialogue with the monk's amulet. Tweaked an animation for male gnomes to avoid clipping when male halflings interact with the home of Baldurin. Fixed an animation loop that caused the characters to pop when holding an amulet. Removed a long pause in the dialogue with a star in without his scars. Karlak now draws her weapon a little more suavely in her recruitment dialogue. Polished up the scene after the Gith depart the material plane during the endgame. Tweaked scene triggers for the dialogue at camp where Mizori reminds Will what he needs to do for her. Moved the candles, plate and hourglass on the altar to avoid clipping in a nighttime camp dialogue with Shadowheart. Fixed a cut off ceiling in Minsk's dialogue in the counting house. Made sure you can see the altar behind Viconia in dialogue with her. Tweaked camera shots across several dialogues, particularly in romantic scenes. Fixed the Emperor's tentacles jittering in a certain camp dialogue. Fixed Will's head popping in dialogue near the endgame. Fixed Lazel's looking in an awkward direction in a dialogue near the endgame. Fixed some awkward head position in a dialogue with Baron Gehorst in William's Crossing. Fixed dagger placement and a head direction in the first dialogue with Viconia. Fixed an empty camera shot when talking to the wolves and goblins near the windmill in the blighted village for our wild shaped. Made characters' heads turn and feel less snappy in the dialogue with Thanar in Pilgrave's mansion. Healed Raphael's broken fingers in the House of Hope, he must have been gesticulating too hard. Cured Lazelle of the jitters in one of the end game cinematic dialogues. Made companions face the squirrel properly when talking to it. Fixed the mysterious artifact rotating by itself in Shadowheart's hand. It may be mysterious but it's certainly not followed around by a poltergeist. Fixed it looking like you're kissing the air in a romantic moment with Lazol at camp in Act 2. Fixed an issue where you step a bit too far forward when chatting to the goblins near the walk pens in the goblin camp causing some funky camera shots. Fixed strong body types blocking the camera in the scene with boss by the mount pass. Fixed Thodric Shedevere sometimes appearing out of his market store during dialogues. 
depicts a certain statue looking like it's been absolutely drenched in blood in a scene at night with shut heart, fixed hands clipping onto the body when talking to Blades Baxter in the Guild Hall, prevented some of the convoy of the Absolute from stepping up in onto invisible platforms when approaching the hut with the Drad. Fixed an issue with Sclerita Fowl's hands could clip into each other during a scene when he orders you to commit an act of evil while he talks about cooking your dinner. Added new scene staging in the morphic pool after you kill Gortash. You will no longer be wearing a helmet during Volo's sophisticated operation on you. Fixed an issue where you ask the bloated hyena what happened to it after failing an arcana check in the dialogue resulting in the bursted scene triggering twice. Made several improvements to the first dialogue you have with Balin. Fixed the pile of bodies showing up at the wrong time in the dialogue with the strange ox in the barn in Riventon. Polished Orin's animations in dialogue with the Dark Urge at the Temple of Baal. Fixed the Dwager's poor servant's appearance in dialogue not matching up with how he looks in game. He's now rightfully fungal. Cleaned up jitters in the dialogue with Devela Fountainhead at Basil's Gate. Cleaned up jitters and strange looking fingers in the dialogue with Clerk Zolorex at the Counting House. Adjusted where characters are looking in Jahira's dialogue with Tate. Fixed female elves clipping through the door of the barn with the ogre and the bugbear. Added more detailed animations for the spectator in the underdog. Adjusted the intro shot when you first enter the astral prism through the plane cast and crash select to account for dragonborn body types. Polished the animation for when Dame Aelin brings Lorican down into a backbreaker. Adjusted fade-ins to avoid the incubus starting the conversation standing in the House of Hope. Fixed Thodric Shedevere standing behind his store during gameplay but in front of it during his dialogue. Fixed Lazo clipping in the dialogue with the Zazis in Kreshelik. Adjusted lip contact for Dragonborns when kissing Astorian. Polished the scene with Shadowheart on a lonely camp night when she steps in close to you. Fixed Waldo Walnut's head position in his dialogue in the Ulf Song Tavern. Fixed the nudity filters not working correctly on Harlop. Cleaned up some animations and clipping on female dwarves and gnomes in a dialogue with the old dream visitor in the astral plane. Fixed head contact with the liar in the shadow curse lands if you fail a dialogue check. Fixed jittering and an issue with where Dame Aelin is looking in her dialogue with Lorican at Sorcerer Sundries. Fixed Chara Blank's awkward head position in the lower city. Adjusted an awkward position in the Bunch Ugly in the Lower City. Fixed a trigger issue in the dialogue with Raphael in the House of Hope after the, the year alarm goes off. Fixed the cinematic of Minsk leaving the party ending prematurely. Fixed some cameras to account better for shorter races. Polished Kolak's facial expressions in her recruitment dialogue. Fixed several issues for female dragonborn body types when getting touchy smoochy with Will in Act 3. Adjusted Halfling's legs so they don't intersect when crossing over in the scene with Lazol at camp after the celebration. Added explosion visual effects in the dialogue with the brewer. Tweaked a camera in the scene with the chosen in the colony. Fixed a sliding foot and fixed some cameras for small races in the dialogue where Saza is caged in Emerald Grove. Fixed a head pop in the dialogue where Saza is caged in Emerald Grove. Added a new camera in the dialogue with Harper Skywin after the Drada ambush. Fixed some broken tentacle animations and background characters not appearing in the right place in a cinematic dialogue at the Morphic Pool. Fixed some animations for Le Zol in the dialogue at night after the camp celebration. Fixed clipping in the dialogue with Yafo the Genie. Fixed a disappearing character in a dialogue with Lorican in Sorceress Sundries. Fixed hugs clipping for taller players, a story and jittering, and other issues in a story's main act 2 romance scene. Adjusted the animations for Dragonborn characters in the R removal scene with the hag. Fixed some animations for large characters and humans when interacting with the wall in Moonrise Towers. Added additional head animations for the Emperor's tentacles and adjusted the mocap. Fixed Lazol's leg clipping into the bedroll in the camp scene with Gale in the secluded grove. Fixed clipping in the camp scene with Lazol after the camp celebration for Dragonborns. Added custom animations for male mound flayer tentacles and tweaked the mocap in the dialogue with the dream visitor about Stelmane. Smoothed the animation to reduce jitter in the dialogue with Jahira about the events at Dantalons. Fixed cinematic issues with some dialogues with animals. They will now temporarily remove your wild shape form for the duration of the dialogue. Toned down characters' reactions to tossing food to the Owlbear Cub at camp. Fixed several issues like pops, adjusted some cameras, and made sure there's contact when kissing in Shadowheart's main dialogue. 
fix clipping in a dialogue with Carlac about her upgrade, fix Carlac's comment not playing if the dialogue with Nadira triggers automatically, fix an offset camera when talking to Findol in the Emerald Grove, fix Gauntlet Yeva floating about in her dialogue plus other minor tweaks to cameras and head directions, made sure dialogues with the counting house clerks and cashiers play in the right location, fixed a line that was cut too short when talking to Fezzerk by the windmill, fixed a camera issue in the dialogue with Aurelia in Cazador's palace, tweaked some mocap, removed chitters and adjusted poses in the dialogue with Charles Mola, fixed a block camera, some jump cuts and other animation in the dialogue with Karlak about soul coins at Moonrise Towers, fixed some fade outs from Lazel's dialogue after the endgame battle, fixed Lazel's hair popping when she climbs the dragon in the endgame, fixed some frozen mocap on Malice Thorn, fixed Dame Aelin missing her wings and helmet in a dialogue in Sorcerer Sundries, fixed the lighting in a shot in the dialogue where you first use one of the tadpoles, fixed missing visual effects for Minsk in the lower city, Oliver will no longer be visible in cutscenes after he walks off, fixed the door disappearing too soon in a camp scene with Gale, fixed facial expressions in a Lorican dialogue in Sorcerer Sundries, fixed the lighting in a Lorican dialogue in Sorcerer Sundries, made several touch-ups in the scene with the ogres in that the blighted village, made several touch-ups when you talk to Orpheus before freeing him, fixed a camera when talking to Shadow Whiskers in the circus at Worms Crossing, made fixes related to carving onto Cazador's back when resolving the Black Mass ritual, more polish relating to Karlak's cinematics, facial expression polish relating to certain Gondian workers in the Steel Watch foundry, fixed a voice line cutting off early when talking to Warrior Plague at the Goblin Camp, fixed magical weapons casting powerful lighting on characters during cinematics, fixed a goblin floating up from a bent position in the chicken chase scene at the Goblin Camp, clipping fixes for Shadowheart in the Path of Darkness cinematic, more polish relating to Karlak and Astorian romance cinematic, did a polish pass on Karlak's first dialogue in the House of Hope, fixed pops and camera issues in the camp dialogue with Astorian after his blood thirst goes too far, Cleaned some jittery mocap in dialogues in the Olson Tavern and in Cazador's Palace, fixed some camera shots in the dialogue with Dolly Dolly Dolly, updated cameras for short races when interacting with the tentacle in the wall at Moonrise Towers, fixed some tentacle clipping and animations when talking to the Emperor, fixed where characters are looking in a dialogue in the walk pens, fixed some facial animations in the dialogue that triggers if you attempt to progress through Act 2 without Catherick's Netherstone, fixed some emotions for Mentharo, when she says she will stay in the Shadow Cursed Lands, fixed looping animations for Bernard and player characters, fixed will sometimes missing from certain shots in the camp dialogue with Mazora, fixed head jitters and a kiss making no physical contact in a dialogue with Lazol, fixed Lazol popping in an in game dialogue, fixed the skiff at the morphic pool moving sideways and unnaturally, and fixed an empty shot where your character should appear, fixed Volo's needle not appearing, Fixed Lazol's head popping in a dialogue about Vlacketh. Fixed a pop and a blocked camera in Shadowheart's dialogue in the endgame. Fixed characters looking the wrong way at night with Mentharo after the camp celebration. Made minor adjustments to character positions when opening the barn with Oga and the bugbear. Fixed an issue in dialogue with Gale caused by uneven ground. Fixed some clipping and hidden issues in a romance scene with Karlak. Fixed some puddle hands and cleaned up the animations for Harper Donna at last light, fix some animations pop ups in the dialogue with Steel with Claw, the delightful Moonrise Cat. Fix several issues like pops and clips in Gale's recruitment dialogue, fix Nettie's branch clipping through her clothes, fix some animations on short races when recruiting Gale, added some custom twists and turns from Mind Player Tentacles, fix some quirky elbows and mocap issues in the dialogue with Lacey Dancer, fix an awkward shot of Oren in one of her reveals made some improvements to the dialogue with Bernard, including a missing Gale. Moving on to the engine, made miscellaneous performance optimizations, made minor GPU time improvements on the Vulcan renderer. Went on to the launcher, added a clearer message about mod and data mismatches and some options to help fix it. Added confirmation for resetting your graphics. And going on to the controller, Fix the controller cursor disappearing when switching from controller to keyboard and mouse by pressing the escape key and then switching back to the controller. Fixed secondary weapon slots not working correctly on controller if something was already cropped there. Fixed a controller issue preventing you from selecting an oath when multiclassing into a paladin. 
fixed a missing healing icon on controller. And then finally we're going to finish off with other. Fixed a memory leak on saving and loading. Fixed allies abilities causing a performance issue in the end game. Fixed non-dialogue scenes not updating their animations, for example the rats in the main menu. Improved robustness of behavior animations and script interaction. And that is the full patch notes for patch 1. Holy moly that was a lot. <laughs> Alright, hope you all have a fantastic day. Take care and cheers for now.